Fellow Ghanaians, I've come into your homes again this evening to provide an update, as I promised, on the measures taken by government to combat the coronavirus pandemic. You may recall that on Wednesday, 12th March 2020, when I first spoke to you directly on this matter, I announced the first raft of enhanced measures taken in response to the pandemic. At the time, there had been no reported confirmed case of the coronavirus in Ghana. Since then, six confirmed cases have been announced, all of persons who recently traveled into the country. Advisories on how to manage the developments have also been announced by the Ministries of Health and Information. Public education is being intensified to ensure that citizens are well advised on preventive measures. Earlier today, Sunday, the 15th of March, 2020, I chaired a meeting of the Interministerial Committee on Coronavirus Response. After deliberations, I've decided, in the interest of public safety and the protection of our population, to review the public gathering advisories early announced as follows. Firstly, all public gatherings, including conferences, workshops, funerals, festivals, political rallies, sporting events, and religious events such as services in churches and mosques have been suspended for the next four weeks. Private burials are permitted, but with limited numbers, not exceeding 25 in attendance. Secondly, all universities, senior high schools, and basic schools, i.e. public and private schools, will be closed Monday, 16th of March, 2020, till further notice. The Ministry of Education, in collaboration with the Ministry of Communication, has been tasked to roll out distance learning programs. However, BECE and WASI candidates will be allowed to attend school to prepare for their examinations, but with the prescribed social distancing protocols. Thirdly, the Government of Ghana's Travel Advisory, issued earlier today, should be observed as announced. Fourthly, businesses and other workplaces can continue to operate, but should observe prescribed social distancing between patrons and staff. Fifthly, establishments such as supermarkets, shopping malls, restaurants, nightclubs, hotels and drinking spots should observe enhanced hygiene procedures by providing, amongst others, hand sanitizers, running water and soap for washing of hands. Sixthly, the Ministry of Transport should work with the transport unions and private and public transport operators to ensure enhanced hygienic conditions in all vehicles and terminals by providing, amongst others, hand sanitizers, running water, and soap for washing of hands. And seventhly, the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development should coordinate with the Metropolitan, Municipal, and District Assemblies measures to enhance conditions of hygiene in markets across the country. Additionally, as the experts conduct contact tracing, I appeal to all to cooperate with them to ensure that persons who have come into contact with positive cases are identified and supported. I've directed the Attorney General to submit immediately to Parliament emergency legislation in accordance with Article 21 4 C and D of the Constitution of the Republic to embody these measures. And I've further directed the Minister for Health to exercise its powers under Section 169 of the Public Health Act 2012, Act 851, by the immediate issuance of an executive instrument 
to govern the relevant profession. I call upon Parliament to support the executive in this national endeavor. As I said earlier, there's every need to observe prescribed social distancing and good personal hygiene to prevent community spread. We are determined to do whatever we can to prevent the spread of the virus and protect the population. All the measures that have been announced will be subject to constant review and enhancement if necessary. Fellow Ghanaians, these are not ordinary times. So let us all put our shoulders to the wheel. And I'm confident that together, by the grace of God, we shall overcome this challenge. May God bless us all and our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention. Your Honour, Ministers of State, Heads of agencies, our partners, I can see WHO here, uh, friends from the media, Ghanaians. I provide this date as a follow up of the press brief by the Minister of Health and Information that announced the first two confirmed COVID 19 cases and consequently de that de consequently declared the outbreak in Ghana on the 12th of March this year, three days ago. Both individual in these cases returned to Ghana outside the country, one from Turkey and the other from Norway. Hence, the two cases were both imported. The first case is a woman, it's a man, resident in Accra, who returned to Ghana from a trip in Turkey on the 29th of February this year. He developed symptoms on the 10th of March and reported to a health facility on the same day. He was identified as a suspected case of COVID-19. Sample was taken same day. The sample was sent to Noguchi Memorial Institute Medical Research, and within a short while, we had the report from Noguchi confirming that Ghana has confirmed the first case of COVID-19 in the country. The second case is a 60-year-old man, a Norwegian, who returned to Ghana, Accra, on the 7th of March, he started developing symptoms on the 12th of March and reported to a doctor on the same day. Sample was taken, sent to a laboratory, specifically in the Gucci Moria Institute Medical Research, and we received reports later in the day indicating this is also another confirmed case of COVID-19. The two reports came the same time because the samples were sent and they were worked on at the same time. So we had simultaneously two confirmed in this case on the 12th of March this year. Both patients, for both patients, cases had no symptoms on arrival at the time of crossing our borders and later they presented with acute respiratory illnesses. We had evidence of exposure. They had been to areas where cases had been filmed. Both cases are currently being treated under isolation conditions and the two are stable. Contact tracing has started. I'll give details later and it's ongoing. On Friday, the 13th of March this year, two days ago, not too far, two more cases 
were confirmed as COVID-19. They reported in two regions, one each from Ashanti region and the other greater Accra region here. The first is a 56-year-old man, a Ghanaian, who returned from a trip in the United Kingdom on the 4th of March. He stayed in UK for 10 days and came back. He developed symptoms on the 12th of March, reported to a hospital in Obuasi, and the case definition met, met, met the case that of suspected COVID samples were taken. The sample from this case were sent to Kumasi Collaborative Center for Cases for research. And within a short time, the lab reported back as that they have finished the assessment of the report. And this is another confirmed case of COVID in the country. The second is a woman, a female, and a student, Ghanaian student. She traveled out to the United States of America, stayed for 10 days or so. She came back on the 9th of March. And then on the 13th of March, she started having symptoms that later were evaluated to be compatible with suspected case of COVID. Samples were taken, sent to Noguchi Memorial to medical research. Samples were taken on the 13th. The same day, we had a report from Noguchi that confirmed this as another confirmed case of COVID-19. Both are currently receiving treatment under isolation conditions, and both are stable. I'm talking about the two of them that were seen the 13th. Yesterday, late in the afternoon, we received report of two new confirmed cases from the Gucci Memorial Institute Medical Research. The first is the 42-year-old Ghanaian male who returned to Ghana on the 8th of March. He had traveled to Switzerland and UK in the past 14 days. Symptoms started on the 9th March, and he started, he reported to the health facility on the 14th March. Samples were taken, sent to the lab again, the Gucci Memorial did medical research. Within a short while, we had the report, and this was confirmed positive. The second case was a 41-year-old Ghanaian male. He reported to Tema General Hospital on the 14th of March with a history of fever and acute respiratory illness. This symptom started on the 10th of March. This case had traveled to Germany and Turkey within the last 40 days. Samples were taken sent to the lab, again, the Gucci Memorial Institute Medical Research, and the report came back as positive COVID-2019. Both cases had no symptoms on arrival, presented with symptoms of fever and acute respiratory illnesses, and they were not having signs and symptoms time they are crossing our borders. Both are current, currently under treatment in stable conditions. Contact tracing has started. This brings to a total of six confirmed COVID-19 cases in Ghana with no death. And, and this is the situation as at close of 14th March 2019. That was yesterday. All the cases are small. All the six cases were imported into the country. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, permit me to use this opportunity to remind audience and people of people living in Ghana to adhere to the preventive and precautionary measures. Key among those are as follows. Wash your hands regularly and thoroughly with soap and underrunning water 
and use alcohol rubs sanitizers frequently. Avoid shaking hands. Cover mouth and nose with tissue when coughing or sneezing. Dispose of the tissue immediately into trash bin. Keep a distance of at least two meters away from a person with fever, cough, sneezing, and difficulty in breathing. It is advisable to be fiscally active. Everybody is required as advised to drink plenty of water. We have to eat healthy food, avoid stress, have enough rest, have enough sleep. Restrict travels to essential travels only, as directed by the Excellency, the President. Stay home if you feel unwell and symptoms of fever, and having symptoms of fever, cough, and difficulty in breathing, and call the following number immediately for help. 0509-497-700. Before I take leave of you, just a brief about the details of the various cases that we have had with respect to the contacts that we are managing. First four cases, contact tracing has started. The last two cases we just confirmed over the night, and we have started mechanisms to identify the contacts. Case one, the contacts, um, the location, then there is a man called Seth, the location, we have identified two contacts, and all the contacts are being traced. Case two, the Norwegian, we have identified 107 contacts, and 68 of them, we've started process to follow them up. The rest, in the close of today, you'll be in touch with them and support them with regards to their contact tracing. This three is a student, and out of the various, for now, we have identified 12 contacts. We are still in the process to work assiduously to get more. And the last case, the fourth one, um, was, is, and the place residence is Obuasi. Currently, we've identified two contacts, and all the 30 contacts are being followed up. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Bedusa Kodier, for that update on the index cases, contact tracing, and two new cases. Um, later, we will direct you to a platform that the regular updates of any cases so that we avoid all media speculation, and I'll go into that in some detail. But there's something that they call the um, triage protocols. When people with suspected events first show up at hospitals, I want to invite the Director General of the Ghana Health Service to reiterate what has already been announced, but it's important to reiterate what these triage protocols are. Dr. Baji. Thank you very much. I want to stand on the existing protocol and go straight. I think uh, this has come up since the outbreak to ensure that we protect uh, staff and uh, patients. And so we have two stages of pre-triaging and triaging. The pre-triaging means that are there outpatients especially where we have uh, patients that are coming, you will be asked to see whether you have any respiratory condition, cough, sneezing, fever, etc., and separated so that you do not go into the outpatients and sit among other patients, and the special people will be seeing you. So those doctors who will be seeing those patients will also be protected, will have to wear some masks and also be able to uh, uh, review and see whether you are a suspected case and how you are treated. This is done to ensure that patients are kept safe, especially those who don't have the condition, do not have to mix with other patients and spread the disease. And also pay, uh, doctors, nurses and health workers, records officers who are attending to these patients are so protected to reduce any level of fear among others. This is something that we have instructed all our facilities to institute to ensure that People are feel safe going to those facilities, and people who are there are protected from getting in contact with people who may be as of COVID-19. So thank you very much. Uh, 
Dr. Patrick Abwaji, thank you for retreating uh, those trial protocols. Ladies and gentlemen, the government of Ghana is issuing a travel advisory this afternoon. And the travel advisory is as follows. We'll give you peace subsequently, but I'll read it out to you. First is that all travel to Ghana is at this stage strongly discouraged until further notice. Second, any traveler except for Ghanaian citizens and persons with Ghana residence permits who within the last 14 days has been to a country that has recorded at least 200 cases of COVID-19 will not be permitted into the Ghanaian jurisdiction. Airlines are instructed not to allow such persons to embark Border posts are instructed not to allow such persons into the jurisdiction. Three, there is now going to be a mandatory 14-day self-quarantine for persons who are otherwise allowed to enter the Ghanaian jurisdiction. Guidelines for the self-quarantine will be available at the various Ghanaian ports of entry. Enforcement protocols are being deployed in collaboration with the state security and health authorities. Persons determined to be able to satisfactorily